Yes, so I have uh, very few minutes to talk a bit about, um, like I think, the future of R. I know this was not the intent when it was released first, but uh, I think this is really going somewhere. Um, which is uh, generative R, which is, uh, which is something that is not specific to R, and I think is quite of a niche in R, so it's probably not going to take over the world there. But um, this is one of my side projects. Um, I, my name is Thomas, I said. Um, I'm a software engineer at R Studio, and I develop Gplot2 and a lot of other uh, data visualization and graphics packages. And, and I generally enjoy graphics and, and looks and so on. So this is um, when I'm not using R for package development, I'm using R for, for doing this kind of generative art. And um, I also enjoy Twitter, follow me there. Um, and I'm also blogging on Data Imaginist and all of my pieces are in the R subdirectory. Um, so what I'm going to talk a bit about today is what is generative art? Um, what is it in R? Uh, mainly, there's a whole whole world around uh, generative art. A lot of it is based on uh, processing or um, JavaScript and, and Python code, but uh, it's kind of doesn't really matter where you where you do it. Like mo most uh, most programming languages are capable of, of drawing stuff, and that's really the only thing that needs. So, um, so all of the things that I'm showing today are, are direct output from R. They're all been generated with ggplot2. So there's nothing fancy going on in that regard. Like it's, it's just plots and it's just data, right? So generative art is kind of a, a rubber term for computational art where you don't have full control. Um, so there's some randomness in there and sometimes um, the randomness is complete in the sense that, that the, the artist mainly sets up a system with some randomness, generates maybe, I don't know, 500 pieces, and then just do a curation and say, well, this worked out, this was just crap, this worked out, this was like, and, and do a, a very, very uh, thorough curation and just selects a few that he really enjoys. Um, I don't do that um, in general. Um, my, my ideas and goals are more to, to set up systems that I cannot fully control, but I understand to a certain extent. And, and that means that I can, uh, I can set up a system and I can try to, uh, to, to inject a bit of control in them, but still be kind of surprised by the, uh, by the results. So usually I'm not doing uh, like these 500 runs, also because this takes like 10 minutes to, uh, to generate, so I don't really have that kind of time. Um, I've often on Twitter been asked about the code, um, and this for, for me, the code for generative art is is kind of a, a contentious area in the sense that art is not really about the code, right? Art is about the output, and I'm being maybe a bit protective about some of the code, but on the other hand, I think 99% of the code that I use for for generating art is already out there because I I published almost all of the workhouse packages that I, uh, that I used. And a lot of these packages have actually been informed or been uh, developed directly because I wanted to use them for generative art. So there's a couple of packages up here that you are very free to use for doing exactly the same thing. Um, Particles is, uh, is a port of the D3 force algorithm. So if you've seen networks wobbling around in JavaScript, those have been uh, based on the D3 force uh, layout algorithm. And it's a really nice algorithm, and I thought it would fit R very well. So I've made this package, and, and it's basically, basically not really for doing networks anymore. It's for setting up a system with different forces and different constraints, and then just throwing particles in there and, and iterating on them, seeing what happens. And it becomes very, very clear how this can be used to, to gener generate art, right? You can set up interesting systems and just watch particles flow around, drawing them, doing, uh, doing weird alpha blendings with, with them and so on. Um, and the other workhorse package of, of some of my work is uh, the ambient package, which is uh, a package that does uh, generates random flow fields, so Perlin noise and simplex noise, and whirly noise, if those mean anything to you. Uh, people have won Oscars for developing these noise algorithms, so, so like these, those are really cool. And basically what they do is that they don't 
do, they don't just create like white noise. When we when you think about noise, it's just like this completely random thing. They they create uh, they create noise that is sort of um, harmonic in the sense that that they they look a bit like uh, mountain uh, hillsides and so on. Um, and they are really really nice for generating flows and and so on that that has kind of a organic feeling to them, but it's not really organic in that sense. And, and all of what I'm showing here relies heavily on, on these kind of flow fields. So, so these kind of, of flows that seems like things are diffusing into water and so on are based on, on these, this idea of, uh, of simplex noise, and which, which really is, is just random, random noise. GGForce and GGplot2 has been uh, informed by my, uh, by my work because you have no idea which kind of, of weird edge cases you go into when you try to plot like 70 million points at once. Um, so a lot of the a lot of the speed ups that I've been trying to put into ggplot2 has uh, has actually been informed by by some of that. So hopefully uh, it will benefit you all, whether or not you, you enjoy this kind of, of thing. Um, the last thing is uh, is rack, which is a graphic device. Um, so when you when you type PNG uh, braces and and create a PNG uh, image from your from your plots. RAG is kind of the same. It just it's based on another uh, another underlying li library um, called AGG, um, and it has been informed in, in the sense that uh, the graphic devices that comes with our are sorry to say it, they are a bit ancient uh, and not that fast. And I'm trying to kind of push that, um, and hopefully maybe we can we can push this into R as well, so it's it benefit everyone. Um, so. I am, uh, my inspiration specifically are very much to look into like nature and what nature has, um, has to offer because I think nature is generally beautiful, but just, just trying to emulate nature in itself is also maybe kind of boring, right? Because you can just go outside and get precisely the same and take a picture, right? So, so, so you need to do something more. So you can get inspired by nature and these pieces, for instance, has been inspired um, or this, this system, usually I make a system and then create multiple pieces and try to uh, push the boundaries of that system. So th this system has in been inspired by the storms and, and Jupiter. Uh, I think those are really, really beautiful. And the Juno, uh, Juno satellite is just sending like a stream of extremely beautiful images, high resolution images of the, the cloud storms and Jupiter. I really wanted to, to try to not do exact replicates of that, but just trying to get that swirling uh, feeling. And, and that kind of led me to inserting uh, uh, big objects and, and kind of have this swirl to, to follow around that and get more turbulent below them and so on. Um, so what I want to do is, like, I want to take this natural phenomenon and, and then just try to bend it, right? I, I want to, to take that control I have when I create a system that is almost natural and then just throw completely unnatural things at it and see what happens, because you cannot do that in nature, right? Um, so, so as we talked about, there are flow fields and networks and particle system and all of these things that are actually quite computational, uh, computer engine stuff and things that you can learn and think about with outside of generative art. All of these can inform your art and you can, you can kind of have a relationship where you learn about these things, you can use them in your real life as well, um, but you can learn them from the onset of you want to generate some beautiful pictures. Um, and yeah, time's almost up. I'm not the only one doing this in R. There's a lot of people that are doing outside of R, but it's, there's a lot of people, or less, four people specifically, <laughs> uh, and, and, and probably also some more, uh, who is beginning to, to really uh, take this and run with it. Um, and then it could be fun to, to have more people joining it, um, joining in. But these are also just people that are fantastic to follow on Twitter because they make beautiful, beautiful, beautiful art. Yes? That's all I had to say. Thank you for your attention.